think I've narrowed it down to uh, this injector pump is you know maybe not you know completely bad but we narrowed it down to at least that it's got a problem so I'm gonna have to pull this injector pump out of here and see uh, see what I can do if I can get somebody to recondition it or if I have to just completely replace it but we shall see so I'm gonna pull this thing out it's a cartridge type injector pump and from what I understand I just need to take these main bolts off and uh, take off of course the lines which I already have off really they're just kinda sitting there and uh, pull that whole thing out so uh, let me go ahead and start doing that Alright, so I will admit that wasn't fun. I had to use basically a screwdriver and slowly tap around the outsides of this injector pump to finally get it to budge. It was really in there. It seated itself on well. I, I don't know. I mean, it's just a metal shim between this and the block. But man, it did not want to come off. So after working that, working around it, uh, trying to get that thing to let loose out of the block I've uh, pretty much got it coming out I don't want to bend these lines very much but uh, I'm going to have to move them some get this thing to come out come on already. there it is uh, I see well, that's not good. There's a um, there's a pin in there that I got to take out to get it out of there. It's not very nothing special. There's just a cotter key in there that uh, I'm gonna have to take out, and then that's it. That's the the shim and everything that's on there. All right, let me get that thing out of there and pull that cutter key out. I do not want to lose that. Came off very easy by just with hand, just with hands, whatever you want to call it, with hand. And if I bend it back or set it back in that position. So if you set the if you set the injection pump kind of back like it's going back in, that will come off. Hopefully I don't lose it inside the engine. It doesn't look like it gets lost. And that's it. So there's the injection pump pulled out. And it uh, doesn't look too bad from this angle. But if you look at the bottom, there's rust in there. There's stuff that's corroded in there. It doesn't look pretty. I think it's just from it sitting in there, just uh, locked it up, really. So I'm gonna see if I can free it up. Not that that means, makes it any good, but I'm gonna see if I can free it up, at least to get it maybe cranked if it'll move. But uh, most likely I need to get that thing rebuilt for this tractor to operate properly. Okay, so these pumps and they're mechanical and something like the crankshaft or something will tap against these uh, bearings and they'll make it pump like this, right? So this moves up and down. But when I pulled this injector pump out, all four of these were frozen up. So like if you see on this one, this one's still frozen up, it won't move. These, I actually was able to get freed up. Now, being who I am, I tinker with everything. If I, you know, like I said, worst case, I have to replace it anyway. So I started pulling it apart. I pulled this first one out without pulling these so that way if for some reason I couldn't remember how I pulled it out I could at least use these as examples to get these back in. To do that I had to take this this I guess you could say it, it holds this it all it really does is hold these little 
items in place. And these are the items. They're very small, but they're pins that go in here and they keep this, if you can see this slot here, they keep this in place. So this can go in here. And if you can imagine the pin going in there, it's gonna go inside of that hole right here, which would let it go up and down the way it needs to be, but it would never let it go too deep or, too, or come out. So that pin holds that in place. And this is basically everything that was inside of that. Now, if you see this, you know, it's been in hydraulic fluid, um, but it's very rusted. This is very rusted. This down here, when I say rust, I mean, this is all surface rust. I can clean this, but this was very rusted. And, and this little cylinder that goes on this was rusted. But again, it's all superficial rust. It's surface rust. I'm going to get a, a brush and I'm going to clean that off real good. Rinse it real well with diesel. And then I'm going to put all this back together. And look at how corroded up these pieces were with rust inside. This was the one that was jammed. I was able to get it out, took it apart, slowly started pulling it out. Uh, had to tap it out with a punch slowly. I mean, they clean up fine. I mean, with a screwdriver even, they clean up pretty good. Uh, I think that's it. I really think that's the problem. This, that one piston here, this one over here, was really hard to get out of here. I had to slowly tap that out with a punch and, the, and a hammer uh, without trying to, I don't want to score any of the cylinders or anything like that. So I had to be real careful and delicate, but I got that thing out of there. Yeah, it was nasty in there. So that's, I'm pretty sure my problem. Uh, I'm really just hoping that, uh, that the injectors don't look like this. So, uh, but I'm gonna clean this thing up and see what it'll do. I've got this pump put back together. Cleaned up nice, cleaned out all the holes, cleaned up all the insides. This is the uh, inlet for the fuel. That line's cleaned out. I cleaned out the bleeder here. Took all this stuff out. This, um, that black thing there is the shim. It's like gasket slash shim to keep it in timing. But since it's the same one, that should still be in proper timing. The only thing that you really got to pay attention to is when you pull these this clip off and you pull these little these little pins out so that these plungers come out is the the order and the the way that these pieces go back in. Uh, I took a lot of pictures and I even drew myself a little diagram there with how these uh, needed to go back in when I pulled them out. Basically, because there's this there's a gear inside of each one of these that turns the fuel on and off. Um, inside these plungers and when you push this it turns these little cylinders that are inside of here to let the gas either come through or not but inside of this I took them I mean it's all cleaned out cleaned out the the piston where these are got wire brushes on everything this thing should be like rebuilt as long as I put it back together properly we need to put this thing back in All right, so I've got the uh, injector pump in there and I want to show you guys what it's looking like now with the injector pump in after I've cleaned it and rebuilt it. So this, uh, the bleeder for the fuel in is bled and fuel's getting there. The bleeder for the pump has been opened and fuel has poured out of here. And um, I want to show you now what this injector pump looks like uh, when you're turning over the engine now that it's been basically overhauled. So let me come over here and turn the key. Look at that. See how it's just shooting fuel out of every one of those injector holes? Uh, injector lines there shoot out, you know, a bit of fuel with every time that that crankshaft hits those plungers. That's how it's supposed to be working, at least from far as I know, and it is doing that. I'm going to put these lines on. Uh, I'm not going to do that on the camera, but I'm going to put these lines on and hook it all up, and then we are going to see, cross my fingers, and see if this baby fires up.
I've turned it over a couple times just to make sure that I'm not seeing any leaks. And uh, man, to be honest with you, it sounds like it wants to fire up. So I just stopped. I've uh, made sure all the lines are bled and, and got my fingers crossed because it, it sounds like it's wanting to do it. So hang on, here we go. Oh. Do it for me, please. This is awesome. Fuel pump, the fuel injector pump. That's what it was. This is what I needed, y'all. Thank y'all so much for all the help that y'all given me in the comments and the different forums and everything. Man, it sounds good. I've got all of these leaks I gotta fix now. One of them's leaking because I need a bleeder screw, but I've just given up on that fuel filter there. I am gonna go get me a good water separating uh, fuel filter. I don't think that one is. That's probably why we had the problem. Um, I'm gonna go in here and tighten things up because I still see some drips right there from the fuel thing, and that might be coming from where the solenoid goes. I'm not sure. And of course now, I took the solenoid out and I don't have it in there, so now I don't have a good uh, fuel shutoff, so turning the key isn't going to kill it. I'm going to have to cut the fuel. Yeah, I just turned the key off. <laughs> it's not going to kill it because the, uh, the fuel shutoff solenoid is not there, which is cuts off the fuel to kill the engine. So now I've got to cut off the fuel, and I'm just going to do that by un unloosening this fuel hose here, and uh, that way keep any more fuel from going in. There it goes. And that's it. Thanks everyone who's come along on the journey and uh, helped me get this thing running again. Like I said, I'm gonna clean all this up, put it up, dump all this fuel out, and um, get this thing moved. So thanks again everyone. I'll get some new uh, videos of this thing running soon.